Hello and welcome to the first video in this series looking at NVD3. So NVD3, you can see here, um, I'm on the homepage, nvd3.org, uh, is a, as it says on the title here, reusable charts library for d3.js, uh, or in other words, make nice graphs in your web application. Um, I've been using this library for probably nearly two years now. Uh, I really, really like it. And um, I want to do a series really aimed at beginners as usual on how to get going with it, because it's something that even if you're not a developer, but you like, maybe you're playing with data, you want to visualize the data. Um, it's very simple to get a, a very basic web app up and some data and show it in a very, very nice graph with MVD3. The thing with MVD3 is, although you have everything on the, actually on the website that you'll ever need, uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve to get going with it. And there can be some tearing your hair out moments, which uh, I think I've discovered most of them myself in the last few months. Um, and therefore I wanted to do a few videos just explaining how to get going with MVD3. Um, so, to do this, we're going to need a little bit of setup. The good news is uh, you can download code and everything as usual with this video. And uh, in this video, my aim is, is just to have a simple web page with uh, one of the example charts displayed in a, in a panel. But I want to explain to you the steps I took to do that so you can obviously repeat these steps yourself. The first thing uh, we're going to do is look at uh, what code we've actually got. I'm going to close that. I've got a folder in which I'm basing this website or this web page essentially called lesson one here. And inside lesson one, I've got a folder called scripts and a folder called styles and then index.html. Now I'll just bring up the file browser here again. I'm on windows here because I don't usually use windows as I said in another series, but um, I'll do my best in, 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 in this one. Um, so I'm, I'm in on my E drive here, uh, lesson one folder scripts, styles and index are in here. I'm using as an editor sublime text. You can use really whatever you want. I wouldn't recommend using windows notepad, use notepad plus plus or something, but find any editor you like using uh, to be able to modify these files. So uh, you can see here I've got lesson one, <coughs> excuse me, scripts, styles, and then index.html. Uh, uh, looking at what we've got here then, we've got a little bit of something already pre-prepared to set everything up. And that's what I want to explain um, what we've done here. So looking at MED3, we can see there's a getting started section here. So the first thing it says to do is download uh, version three of D3. And this is a critical thing because when we go to the link here and the D3 site, um, the actual link that we've got down the page here is for the current version, which is version four. Now, MVD3 doesn't work yet with version four. Therefore, we need the version three. So what you'll actually need to do is take this link and switch out the four for a three. And then, uh, oops, I lost the S on the end there. And then you'll get the code for version three. Now, for this series, what I've done is actually downloaded all of the uh, relevant files and save those locally rather than linking them directly to the online source. I just prefer to do that so I can work occasionally offline. So in the case of D3 version 3, I just copied all of the JavaScript on here. And then inside scripts and framework, there's a D3 version 3 file. I pasted it all into there and then it's linked inside the HTML here. If we go back to NVD3, it says the next thing you need is the production version of NVD3 version 181. So again, I clicked on the link. Uh, here's all the code. Did a copy and paste of the code and put it this time into framework and in NVD3 underscore 181.js. And again, linked that file inside uh, the, the head part of the HTML file of index.html. And then the next thing as well, it says, and a warning, don't forget the MVD3 CSS file. So open that one as well, copied and pasted all of that code, then ins it's inside styles in NVD3181 CSS, and that we can see here. And then I did my own small styles.css, which is just a couple of small things um, under here as well. And you'll notice that we're still missing two things, jQuery and Bootstrap. So jQuery is just to make things a little bit simpler. We don't need very much jQuery at all in this series. Um, but I went uh, online, uh, typed in jQuery into the browser, went to jQuery.com, clicked download jQuery, and then somewhere down here, there was the link to the latest one. Again, put this in the browser, uh, hit enter, copied and pasted the code then locally into jQuery 321. And then for a little bit of styling, wanted Bootstrap, which is always very, very good. Um, Bootstrap 3, in this case, went to the Bootstrap website, getbootstrap.com, went to version 337 here, and then clicked on download. 
And then somewhere down here is the link to the minified CSS. Again, I put that in the browser and just simply copied and pasted the code into the, my own bootstrap uh, 337 CSS file. All that done then, we're uh, all linked and set up inside the header, also with the two meta tags we need uh, for bootstrap to work properly. Um, and then in the body, I added in uh, a couple of things, a div with um, a title and a button to, that we will press to load our chart. And then here a panel using a bootstrap panel just to display our chart. So nothing very, very fancy, but a start. So to run this site, um, you can actually, I think it would work just by double clicking on index.html here, but that's not the, whenever you're making applications, you shouldn't really do it like that because things can go wrong or extra files are needed to be saved by the browser, etc. Better is to run your own web server on your computer. Now, um, the easiest way, in my opinion anyway, to run a web server on your computer is actually to use Python. Now, you can run a web server in one line with Python. Now, on a Mac or Linux, and I usually use Linux, Python is already installed. Um, on Windows, it's not installed by uh, default, but I was looking around very quickly for a very, very easy tutorial for you of how to get it up and running because it's very, very simple. Um, and I found the best one I found was actually on howtogeek.com. Uh, um, you've got the full URL here, but basically how to install Python on Windows. And whoops, I've clicked on that link erroneously there. Um, and it says, first of all, what version do you need? I used version two of Python, but there's a good explanation here because the critical bit here is in the installation, installing for all users, and here is making sure that you add python.exe to path. That's the critical part of the installation. When it's installed, you should be able to see when you do python-v, uh, the version of Python that's installed. Once you've got that far, you're good to go. So assuming you've got Python installed then, and you've either downloaded my code or recreated my in index.html from here, I assume you've probably downloaded it, I now want to run my website. To do that, I actually need to, in the console, go into the path where the index.html is. Now, in my case, I'm on e-teaching courses, NVD3 lesson one. And if I bring up my console, you'll see that I'm in e-teaching courses, NVD3 lesson one. Now, to run the web server, I simply need to type python-m simple HTTP server, and that will now be running a web server for me. Couldn't be fantastic, couldn't be more simple, could it? So to now view my site, I just need to go to localhost 8000, and you can see that uh, the website has popped up. I'm going to open the developer tools. Now I use Chrome to do that. It's Control, Shift, and I. I don't know what it is on other browsers, but it's the developer tools anyway, so we can see the console. And you'll see here that we've got uh, our um, header here, our button here, and our panel where we want to put the chart. And if I click load chart, I get draw chart in the console. So everything's set up and ready to go. Um, how do I get that load chart? Well, I've got another script inside scripts. There's a function called, uh, a file called functions.js, where using jQuery, this is the shortcut for document ready. I'm simply taking the item, the element with the ID btm load chart, which is the button and saying when we've clicked, let's write to the console draw chart. So we know everything's up and working. Good, so let's uh, get on then to finish this video then. I just made a bit of space there um, with actually trying to put one of the example NVD3 charts inside this panel. I'm going to go to live code and I'm going to go to the discrete bar chart where we're actually already provided with all the code that we need to be able to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the markup.html and we'll see here that we've got uh, some styling for our chart, giving a height of 400 and div ID equals chart. And here you can see that the NVD3 charts are drawn inside an SVG. So I'm going to take this div here and I'm going to drop that in my index uh, HTML inside the panel body and everything becomes messed up with the tabs, which I hate and save that. And then the other part that was uh, inside the markup there, the actual SVG from anything with ID chart, height 400, I think I've already got, I think, because I can't remember, I've already got inside, um, yes, I have, inside my styles.css, so I don't need that anymore. Good, so that's all the markup we actually need to put in our chart. Let's go and have a look at the actual data.json. Now, something really interesting about the data here, which we'll go into more detail, but basically be careful. The data is an object, 
it's an object that's inside a list and that's what often catches people out to start with. So I'm going to copy all of this, including the square brackets. And then I'm going to make uh, a new file in here and I'm just going to save this file and just call this uh, data.js like so. And then inside data.js, I'm just going to paste that and just say var chart uh, data is equal to and save that. So I've got this. I have to remember, of course, to link data.js here, otherwise I'll get very bad tempered and not understand why. And I'll put the data.js first as well. So we've got our chart data then available and a semicolon, whoops, on the end there. Um, and then let's go back into the code. The last thing we need then um, is the actual code to draw the chart. Um, so I'm going to copy all of this code here go back into functions.js. Now I'm not going to paste it into here. I'm actually going to make a new function up here and just call this uh, draw chart uh, because I prefer to do it this way. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit cleaner. Um, and for drawing our chart, I'm just going to literally paste in the code that we got from the MVD3 site. The only thing is here is here the data is called data and our data is called chart data. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to go into here and just call this chart data and save. And all being well, if I now, instead of uh, writing to the console or in addition to, I just call draw chart, we should see our chart appearing on the website. So let's just go here, let's do an empty cache and refresh everything. And now let's load the chart and you can see that the chart has appeared on here. Now interestingly to the right hand side we get a little warning saying tooltips has been deprecated. Use chart.tooltip enabled instead. And this is one of the bits of fun that we're going to have with uh, NVD3. I'll explain this in the next video because this one's gone on too long. But a little bit of the problem with NVD3 is often the examples you see on the live website are often a little bit out of date compared with the current library. So in the next video, we'll have a look at how we fix that warning and then we'll actually look at how we can customize uh, the colors on our bars in this discrete bar chart. But until then, um, let me know if you've got any problems with this video or anything wasn't clear. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.